Mr. Lychik, I'd also like to thank uh, President Kiske and, and uh, Prime Minister Pellegrini for their warm welcome here uh, today. Uh, it's an honor to be in Slo Slovakia for the first time as Secretary of State. It's a special, meaningful uh, to be here just as your country is celebrating 30 years, three decades since the fall of the Iron Curtain and the restoration of your freedom. And I had a chance to reflect on that today. Uh, on Slovakia's courage to be free as I visited the Gate of Freedom Memorial. Right after this, I'll have the chance to be with some, uh, some wonderful young Slovaks who are committed to keeping the flame of freedom alive and take their questions. I'm very much looking forward to that. <clears throat> the U.S. is proud to have been a part of this country's success. Through support for your political transition, economic development, and opening to trade, and of course, through our defense partnership in NATO. Today I had very productive conversations uh, with Slovakia's leaders how we could continue growing our collaboration both bilaterally and through our NATO alliance. And of course it certainly begins with our shared defense priorities. Slovakia's history and experience under Soviet domination, your geographic location in Central Europe, and your democracy gives your country a special appreciation for the aggressive role Russia continues to play in the region. We see this now very clearly in Ukraine, where Russia's illegal annexation continues and its war in the East is at almost the five-year mark. Slovakia recognizes that NATO is most effective when all member states contribute their fair share, and I had the opportunity to thank Foreign Minister for Slovakia's pledge to meet its NATO defense spending commitment of 2% of GDP by the year 2024. Russia is not the only nation that seeks to erode sovereignty and freedom in Europe. I raised in my meeting with the foreign minister the need to guard against China's economic and other efforts to grade dependence and manipulate your political system. The Slovak government realizes it must have a strong and modern defense force to protect its sovereignty. Last year, Slovakia took a major step towards this goal by purchasing 14 of the most modern F-16 fighter jets from the United States to replace its aging fleet of Soviet aircraft was the largest defense person purchase in Slovak history. And I want to especially thank the Prime Minister, Foreign Minister, and Speaker of Parliament for helping to make that happen. That follows on the heels of Slovakia's purchase of nine Black Hawk helicopters in 2015, delivery of which will be completed next year. These moves reduce Slovakia's reliance on outdated and inferior Soviet equipment, they open the door to expanded defense cooperation with the United States and they promote interoperability all throughout NATO. In addition, the United States and Slovakia are currently negotiating a defense cooperation agreement that would facilitate the use of European Defense Initiative funds to upgrade Slovak military infrastructure and further improve the ties, the military ties between our two nations. Of course, the close bilateral relationship between our nations goes well beyond defense. We have a robust trade relationship which the, the foreign minister referred to, and which President I, Trump, Trump and I both hope will expand. We think there's tremendous economic potential, especially given Slovakia's strong economic growth. The promise of 1989 is as alive today as it was 30 years ago. The United States has always believed in freedom for Slovakia, and we have been proud to contribute to your success through an array of economic and other assistance programs as well as through our mutual defense relationship. America's commitment, our commitment to your freedom and independence will not waver. We urge you to continue down the path of liberty and democracy for which so many of your compatriots have sacrificed their lives. Thank you, Mr. Foreign Minister, for hosting.